We're joined with Justin Daniels from Jerusalem, and he is, as you know, on a travel blog there, and he's reporting back to us. Uh, Justin, how are you? I'm very well, Father. Thank you for asking. Uh, we just want, I'm doing well. We just want to touch base with you and uh, let our listeners know that you're okay, number one, because we know of some of the conflict and the difficulties in the Middle East. Um, and then we also want to hear from you. How's it going? How's your pilgrimage going? And uh, what do you hope that uh, we can learn on this side of the pond? Uh, well, to uh, begin with, things, um, even though it seems like the entire region is starting to encounter or experience chaos, it's, it's amazing how it seems uh, on the other side of the world, even though we're right next door. So thank God for uh, the stability here and for, I guess, the uh, security presence that's already here. It mm-hmm. helps maintain definitely order in that sense of uh, peace, um, e- even in the midst of all this. Um, and things have returned to status quo since some of the events that occurred here a couple weeks ago, um, at least in the Holy City, Good. fortunately. Are you able to move around freely? Are you able to move around freely and go from place to place? Are you still watching what's happening? Yes. Uh, yeah, since then, I went to the north, the Galilee area, and then also this last weekend to Bethlehem and encountered zero difficulty. Um, so kind of back to the status quo for processing through checkpoints and, and uh, um, getting cleared by you know the local police and, and et cetera. So, so unfortunately, it's, it's uh, calmed back down. Good. So here you are an Orthodox Christian, in the, the most sacred of places in the world, as far as we know, for, Christ, for all Christians, really, not just Orthodox Christians. Yes. Um, what are you feeling? What's going through your heart? I mean, you're going to be going into some of the most precious places that we know. Tell us what you're feeling at this point. It's overwhelming, and it's a variety of uh, different feelings all at once. Um, when you're visiting the holy places, depending upon, from, for myself, uh, depending upon uh, the number of other people that might be there uh, and, let's say, other energies uh, that you might be picking up on from the other groups, if the other groups are coming in in a prayerful way or if they are uh, rushing in and out, um, this, of course, can all impact you. And what I've found is that um, it challenges us in the same way uh, as we're standing in the liturgy and that we're challenged in our daily lives mm-hmm. that we need to seek the kingdom of God within and so even though there might be chaos around, if it be, uh, you know, shopkeepers or the daily life and, and things like that here, to truly have uh, an experience of the grace and, and an experience of what one is there partaking in, if it's a holy service at a holy site or just the ability to venerate, um, there can be plenty of things around that might attempt to distract you. But as long as we uh, focus and, and kind of, go within to meet Christ as well as um, and, and not worry about, I guess, everything that might be happening around us. Uh, we're able to hold on to those moments and, and enter into those moments uh, because there's going to be plenty of competing elements, if, sure. if, if you will. And, and that's why, I mean, it's overwhelming and also um, a variety of different emotions going on because it can at times be a little frustrating feeling like you have to defend the little spot you're standing in or the space you have in line, but then of course, go back to remember, well, we're all here for the same thing, and we're all here for the same reason to partake in uh, this this grace and these opportunities at these at these places. And so I try to make new contacts and new mm-hmm. friends and share uh, with the people that I meet in these in these moments. And uh, I guess as the Lord said, you know, focusing on the Beatitudes, trying to be a, a fo- go into it, trying to be a peacemaker or um, at peace with my brothers and sisters uh, that are also all competing, let's say, to the, go into some of these places right. as opposed to allow it to be a frustration. Well, I remember my, uh, I remember my first uh, trip there, my first pilgrimage uh, to the Holy Land, and I remember, of course, uh, being a priest for many, many years and having read and preached about all these places and about the life of Christ. We were actually able then to touch and to feel, to go into the tomb yes. where Christ was laid. And I remember literally crying. I remember coming back and celebrating the first liturgy and cried again. Uh, just tell us your heart. What's what's going through your heart right now? And then, then we're going to go for our last question. The, I, I had the, that similar experience, Father, when I went into the Holy Sepulcher. Uh, you enter in, and the first thing that you visually see is the anointing stone where our Lord's body was laid after it was taken down from Golgotha before, while they were preparing for burial before they took it to the tomb. And uh, I had that same experience um, and on this trip, 
felt like I had an experience this weekend worshiping with a group of Palestinian Orthodox in Bejala, uh, um, being led by the choir, the entire congregation uh, breaks forth in the song. And to hear the, the strength of their faith, to feel it, uh, and feel that it's, uh, they're not just singing this out of um, repetition because they do it every Sunday, but that they're proclaiming that we're Christians and we're proud uh, that we're here in this holy land and we want to continue to um, live and have and maintain what we have and uh, to witness to it to all around. And I, I felt enveloped by it and uh, touched in a way and thought, you know, if if everyone could experience liturgies like this, uh, I think that they would understand what we have and, and, and orthodoxy, the, the glorification of God, the oneness of worship together. And it was very beautiful to be able to have that experience uh, with the indigenous, uh, or the people who, who live here right. um, in one of their local churches. And then conversely, maybe in the Holy Sepulchre, having that with the brothers and sisters traveling from other lands, from Greece, and sure. from Russia, and from Ukraine. And and there are thousands of pilgrims there now. And it's um, a very beautiful experience to pray with everyone sure. and to uh, worship with everyone in that oneness. And, of course, very interesting to see some of the different local traditions people come with and how they might pray or worship in certain ways and, and how everyone will you know observe each other and, uh, out of respect and make room and space for everyone's uh, personal cultural expression of the prayer and worship. And so it's um, absolutely renewing the um, Lenten journey, um, deepening that uh, sense and, and desire for repentance and to enter into prayer and to, uh, you know, seek the, the deeper prayer with our Lord and um, then, of course, to try to take what we're given at those times and be able to share it with those others that we might meet okay. on the road or on the way. Finally, and Justin, uh, let me ask you this question. Um, what's coming up? What do you have coming up in the next couple of days that uh, our listeners, because a lot of people are coming to the site, by the way. There are a lot of people oh, following this. Oh, thank God. And uh, that's important. We, we hope that uh, the message that Justin is carrying for us and to us uh, from Jerusalem uh, is an important one for you during this uh, Great Lenten experience and, of course, leading up to Pascha. But uh, don't tell us everything, Justin. Just give us okay. a little bit. Tell us a little bit about what you're going to see in the next three, four days there in Jerusalem. Well, I have uh, some video blogs to, to share coming up uh, centered around Bethlehem and some of the holy sites okay. nearby, Bethlehem, uh, which is the shepherd's field. Uh, the cave of St. Nicholas, where he started to struggle aesthetically in the beginning of his um, journey before he went back to Asia Minor to serve as a bishop. And then Marsaba, the, the monastery there. Also, this week on the old calendar is a celebration of the Annunciation, and so we're hoping to make it up to Nazareth for that celebration. And if uh, we're unable to, I'll try to take that in at the tomb of the Theotokos. I imagine that would be a special place as well. So those are some of the things that I have planned for this okay. weekend. What Sounds I hope good. to be bringing everyone through uh, these video blogs and, and uh, the photos is uh, not just the sights and sounds, but a sense of uh, everything that is hard to put into words. As I said, picture can speak a thousand words. Yes. Uh, the feeling of what it's like to, to be here, um, the daily life, and then the life of a pilgrim and what a pilgrim experiences and as much of that as can be conveyed. So I hope that uh, it's transmitting to you all. And I appreciate your continued prayers. Great, Justin. Thank you so much for joining us uh, from Jerusalem. Uh, we continue to Thank pray you, for you, and we'll continue to Thank follow you, your progress. God bless you. Thank you, Father. God bless.